everyone and welcome to another episode of Fly Inside of Friday. I've managed to find a gap in the rain, so I'm back outside of the bench, which is great. Um, it's been very wet this week, so um, very nice to be outside again. And this week I've got something a bit interesting, a bit different. Um, this is from Thatcher's. Yeah, the, the big mainstream producers, Thatcher's, who you'll have seen your local with Thatcher's Gold and all their other creations. They have decided to make a um, cork and caged sparkling wine, apple wine they're calling it, 11% family reserve. It is based on um, a modern recreation of a uh, over 100 year old recipe that they found a bottle of in the barn recently, I believe, and decided that they'd like to recreate it as something to give their customers to celebrate with. So this is kind of aimed at the Prosecco Carver sparkling wine market, I think, um, as a cider apple alternative. Um, and it's made from Katie apples, so I've got a bottle of their Katie as well. Um, interesting that it's 11%, the normal Kate is 7.4%. So I think, I mean, I know that Thatcher's, I believe that Thatcher's chapterlise. So when they make their cider, they press apples and then they add extra sugar to the juice to get a high alcohol content, which can then either, can then be watered down um, and it stores a bit better. Um, but it's interesting why they've dialed this up to 11 um, when the standard's 7.4. I guess because they're trying to compete with Prosecco, but um, you know, it's nice to have an alternative, lower alcohol alternative, and I think that's something that Craft Cider really offers with their 100% juice creations. They are just keeping the percentage at what nature gives, and it's usually around 8.4 the most, I think, which actually would have saved them some money on duty if they hadn't if they hadn't gone over, because um, apple wine at 11% will have to pay wine duty, and if it had been lower, it would have been cider duty. So that's an interesting choice. But anyway, let's compare them. So, in the glass, very similar. I did think the Family Reserve was slightly darker, but actually I think maybe, maybe it is, but they're very similar. Um, Bubble-wise they look the same now, but when I opened them, the Family Reserve was definitely more sparkling, as you would expect. So let's have a sniff on the nose. It, it smells really fresh. There's, a, there's green apple, maybe some like tropical fruit, like kiwi. If I, if I was being picky, there's maybe a hint of ethyl acetate, so like a nail polishy type um, smell that you can sometimes get if, if it's, there's a slight fault, but it's very, very slight and maybe being sensitive. Yep, okay. So let's uh, try out a standard KT. This is much more apple-y. Yeah, it's got much more stronger aroma. And I'm guessing that's probably to do with the yeast. I would assume they use a cider yeast with this where they've probably gone for a sparkling wine yeast to be able to get up to those percentages without the yeast being damaged or killed off um, because not all yeast can tolerate high alcohol. Um, so that's maybe why this is, smells a bit fruitier. Um, but it's, you know, it's guessing. I haven't got a lot of information from Thatcher, so I don't know exactly what's gone in it. Um, but let's have a taste. It's interesting, there's um, a bit of acid, which you'd expect, acid lead from a KT dessert apple. Then, there's kind of a Prosecco thing going on there, like a little hint of bitterness, and uh, maybe that kind of like brioche, toasted toasted brioche bun type you get from, from sparkling wines. The residual flavor is very, very sweet. Now it says this is dry, but I mean, I drink a lot of dry cider and I make dry cider. This does not taste very dry to me. And I've tried a lot of Proseccos and sparkling wines before, and this does feel sweeter than them. It kind of overpowers the finish a little bit. Yeah, let's, okay, let's try the standard. Medium dry, sweeter than that. Um, it's, it's faultless. It tastes of apple, but because it's so sweet, it almost—it's almost like an artificially apple flavour. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, it just—it is just overpoweringly sweet. There's kind of—you can tell that there wants to be a bit of acid there from the Katie apples, but it's just musked. I'm gonna go back to this and have another little sip. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to summarise really. 
I think it's a really interesting choice for Thatcher's to bring out something like this. Um, I think it really, really sparks the debate again, doesn't it, about fine cider? You know, does it is fine cider something in a bottle like this, or does it have to be from a certain company, or does it have to be craft? I don't have the answer. I just like exploring it every week. Um, on that note, I think I'm going to have a little break for a few weeks. I've been doing Fine Cider Friday for over a year now, and uh, it's been a bit of a weird year, hasn't it, this year? So I'm going to have a few weeks off, spend some time with family, and I'm making my own cider. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued as to um, kind of how far Thatcher's want to take this. I think it's it is comparable in some ways to Prosecco, but it's just so sweet, and I don't know why they've made it 11%. Um, yeah, I'm, I want to hear your views. So thanks everyone for watching all these over the past year. Let me know what you think about Thatcher's getting into this market. Let me know what you think about Fine Cider, and let me pick up all those comments when I come back, and um, and we'll start the conversation again. So. That just kind of gifted me this bottle, so cheers to them for sharing it with me, appreciate that. Um, interesting creation, um, yeah, okay, cheers to the weekend.